I am an Indonesian and I'm proud to be an Indonesian. But anytime I want to talk about Indonesian film to my peers, not really dive deep into the rich history of our cinema. So to compensate for the loneliness, how will I share some of this film with you guys? This is a Cinema Lens. Okay, welcome back to Cinema Lens. And uh, before we start the recommendation today, there's a reason why this video is important for me to discuss. And as you realize today, it's the 30th of March, which is also celebrated as National Film Day in Indonesia. Our film industry could be considered as young, starting from the 1950s and just reaching the golden era in the 2010s prior to the pandemic. As today is the 30th, how about I recommend 30, 30 Indonesian films? I have watched all of these films and I try to avoid recent films from the 2020s as much as possible. It will be a mix of popular art house cult films. And again, this film might not represent the best, but nevertheless are personal for me and to Indonesian film history. I will divide these films by genres and be sure to stick to the end of videos because there will be some surprises that are related to the list. And if you don't see a movie from the list, feel free to recommend to people in the comment down below. And without further ado, these are the 30 Indonesian films you need to watch before you die. So first is comedy. You know, there's a lot of love for comedy in Indonesia, which sadly was dominated by low grade class jokes that work in stand up comedy or obscene vulgar taste that appeals to dirty minded people. Fear not, as this film I will recommend have some value in it. The first will be Johnny's Promise. It's a film that really brings a lot of promise and love of films without being self conscious. Hardcore film fans will definitely love this film, but for mainstream audience, I think you'll be having a great time watching this. The Gathering is also a great place to start to be entertained. And presenting a film that hits too close to home for people living in the capital city of Jakarta. It also could be considered to be a breakthrough in Indonesian freedom of expression, featuring the first gay on screen kiss for the first time in history. When I heard about Check the Store Next Door, I thought it would be another social film by a stand up comedian. But to be included in this list, it is a very heartwarming film with a well written script that will touch a lot of people, even if you're not an ethnic Chinese minority. All of the films I've mentioned before are set in the capital city of Jakarta. If you're trying to find the diverse geographical flavor of Indonesia, Aruna and her plate is a great choice to watch. I guarantee that you'll know more about Indonesia, especially in the cuisine section. And by the way, food porn lovers, you know, should watch this film. For older classic comedies, Dongkrak Antik will be a great place to start. In fact, try to watch all of these legendary films starring the iconic trio comedy, uh, Warkop DKI. It was definitely a nostalgic trip for children living in the 80s, but you know, just bear in mind that it has a copyright issues. Next, we got Horror Film, which is another oversaturated market in Indonesia. If this video was made during the early 2010s, there would be only one or two films I could recommend. But fortunately, horror in Indonesia has improved in a lot of quality, and I would like to recommend first, immediately to the hardcore, The Queen of Black Magic. It's a horror certainly not for the faint of heart. Not only it is terrifying, it will make you squirm for some reason. And not going to spoil, just watch it with your own discretion. May the Devil Take You is also another Indonesia horror gem, creating a slow burning tension that makes you never feel safe for the whole 1 to 10 minutes. But if we talk about horror, what always comes to mind is Joko Anwar Satan Slaves. It can't be denied how Satan Slaves director brought revolution of horror in the film industry, proved by the number of admissions as it was the highest grossing horror film and certainly improving the quality of Indonesian horror until today. Speaking of Joko Anwar, that time is perhaps Joko Anwar's best film to date that mixes his noir genre with the mythical culture of Indonesia, which resulted in a high field social criticism of corrupt Indonesian society. Forbidden Door is also another Joko Anwar quality film that will keep the audience guessing from the start until the end. And it also just shows how fucked up actually Joko Anwar's mind in the early day. But perhaps the overall best that I would recommend is Marina the Murderer in 4X. Aside from being beautifully shot, it addresses the feminism theme in a very cathartic and poetic way. This is certainly a feast for you guys wanting to find another art house film. 
And moving on to action, a category that became popular in Indonesia after the raid. Truly an obvious classic in action films, and it is no doubt to be the easiest one to recommend if you're studying in Indonesian films. It's undeniably one of the most impactful Indonesian films, boosting the popularity of pencaksilat and chase of action films. And I've observed that after the raid, the quality of Indonesian film has been rise since then. And by the way, the sequel, The Raid 2, Brandal, also kicks ass with a more complex plot, character, and certainly more brutal and resulted in double the fun. But if you thought that The Raid 2 isn't in the level of brutal, then you should watch The Night Comes For Us. Not as great as The Raid series, but still decent, and the stylistic kill is a very fun time to watch. The Golden Cane Warrior takes us back into more rooted martial art film, featuring the historical Silla genre that explores old school action film themes of loyalty and ambition. And the one that opens all of this is Garrett Evans Merantau. Unlike The Raid, this film focuses more on dramatic tension, but certainly still has a well choreographed action sequence with heart. I can't even forget how slick the fight between Iko and Naya Ruhian is, and certainly we watch it over and over again. Lastly, we got a drama slash romance film, and this is where most of the great recommended films are. It would be pretty suitable to start with What's Up With Love, a classic Indonesia coming of age romance that really melts the audience's heart, as well as showing Indonesian school culture. Love For Sale is a more adult oriented romance that explores online dating culture, but still as good and emotional as What's Up With Love. If you're looking for a more major one, Love For Sale is a great pick. And then Habibi and Ainun tell the true romance story of our third Indonesian president with his wife. As silly as it may sound to adapt a love story of our president, it is adapted from the book written by Habibi himself, and that's what made this film more impactful and powerful. Moving on from the romantic genre, The Rainbow Troops is one of the most uplifting, inspiring Indonesian films that I've watched. The spirit of the student to pursue education always touched me every time I rewatch this. And if you don't know, The Rainbow Troops is actually made from Andrea Sirata best-selling book. And if you wanted to buy the book, you can just purchase it from the link down below. Speaking of education, Kartini is also a great biographical film about the real-life Kartini and how she advocated for women's rights and female education. And as I was writing this, I realized how diverse Indonesian film is dramatizing the life of a historical-based person. Chut Nyaden, played by the legendary Christine Hakim, is a very well-made film to honor her fight against the Dutch colonial. And then the autobiographical movie G, also packed with a sense of good days in college, while still maintaining the sharp social criticism about Indonesian politics that is still relevant until this date, and a reminder of how his wishes haven't been achieved until now. To extend the background context of Guy, the documentary The Act of Killing is a great film to consume for an in-depth look at the 1965 Indonesian massacre through the eyes of the individual participating in the killings. Beware though to prepare your emotion and heart as this is a very hard film to watch. Even I found this to be one of the scariest non-horror films I ever watched. And the counterpart, the look of silence might not be as terrifying as The Act of Killing but it is still or even more a gut-wrenching experience to watch as we're seeing all of this from the perspective of the victim's relative. Still recommending films addressing political themes, Question Mark is a controversy at release, but nevertheless I found this film to be still politically relevant until this date as it describes the problems and harmony of living between religions in Indonesia. Talking about another controversial film, Memories of My Body was also criticized by the public due to its homosexual theme. But personally, it is a beautiful film that shows the beauty of Indonesia and unfortunately, a hard life through the perspective of Langer Dancer. Yet it's quite confusing because the blind pig who wants to fly, who also features gay character, doesn't get boycotted when released. Yet, I think this film depicts more widely about various minorities living across Indonesia through surreal art house style presentation by Edwin. Next winner on the list would get away from his politically driven drama and move to a more universal theme. Let's talk later about today is perhaps a film that lost could relate with the unrealized broken relationship within family. And it is arguably one of the best color graded films of the entire drama list. And lastly, Three Sisters, a classic that has spawned lots of remake and adaptation. And 
while old, it is certainly still holds the title of the best Indonesian musical film of all time. And that's all for my 30 films recommendation, and please bear with me for a little while because the next segment will be a recommendation from several Indonesian cinephiles. You see, I won't be representing Indonesia myself, and it would be only fair to include several other recommendations by this lovely community of film lovers. And honestly, thank you so much for Cinema Linea, Cinefox ID, Cine Maximal, and Big Board Movie. This video wouldn't exist without your help, and if you would like to ask them for more recommendations or just talk actually about films, I have put the link in the description down below. And first, from Cinefox, they recommend another Indonesia classic after the curfew, directed by the pioneer of Indonesia cinema, Usman Ismail. It was widely considered to be the first film that emphasized expression over entertainment, and this film is widely available at the Criterion Collection if you want to watch it. Moving on to the transition era of power, Before, Now, and Then by Kamila Andini offers a refreshing perspective of woman through its period setting, and I believe that this film is hauntingly powerful of how relevant this film is in today's era. But if you're looking for a more contemporary look of Indonesian feminism, Uni, directed also by Kamila Andini, will surely satisfy and haunt you at the end of the film. In Indonesia, the conversation about women is on the rise, but rarely it talks about the society of men and none really brings it as effective as vengeance is mine, all others pay cash. The talks about toxic masculinity here brought by Edwin is darkly humorous, a bit violent that served as a catholic experience. And lastly, Cinefox recommended The Red Point of Marriage. This is the only film that I had not watched from Cinefox recommendation, but what I heard from people itself is how realistic this film is on representing the conflict of divorce and marriage relationship that will make the audience emotional after watching it. You know, I can't really say much because everyone watched the film. And that's all from Cinefox, moving on to Cinema Linea. The first recommendation is Suci Sang Prima Donna. Portraying Suci as a fragile yet brave mistress, it is a great feminist classic according to Cinema Linea. A well-written character, visually eye-catching, and its philosophical themes shows the genius power of a classic Indonesian director. What are you looking for, Palupi? is another classic that also focuses on feminist themes. But it expands more than about being a woman, touches on existentialism, social, political, and cultural issues at that time. Perhaps it's a heavy film to understand especially if you're not Indonesian, but nevertheless an important and brave film that they fix in the new era transition. Next, you could see that I've only recommended one musical film, but Cinema Linea has another two in mind. Ambition, played by the legendary comedian and musician Biamin Sweb and Bing Slamet. The story itself might be cliche, but it is described to be a powerful representation of Indonesian music through the main lead, chemistry, and fun scenes to watch. Roti One is another musical that should have been discussed by lots of people. A musical film played by child actors and targeted for children is a film with lots of positive messages and surprisingly well played by child actors, making this film a realistic, fun experience to consume. Should have been played in television as often as possible, and I do agree with you, Low Cinema Linea, especially looking at what our television culture has become. Lastly, all because of Gina is one of the best comedy films of Indonesian classic era. It won't only make you laugh, but from the plot itself, you'll find the director Abbas Akub give a lot of critique on modernization, monopoly, and social gap inside his humor. Actually, I do recommend you to check out Cinema Linea. You can see that all of the films Cinema Linea gave to me is Indonesian classic. And I haven't actually seen those films and maybe heard that film, honestly. But you know, I've been following him for so long in Instagram. And if you're interested more about in-depth Indonesian cinema, you can contact the admin for more. And I've given it in the link down below. Next, Cinema Maximal also gives a great recommendation that focuses on contemporary and classic art house film. First, come from the same woman who directed Marlina, Fiction. It's Molly Surya's debut. It's a fantastic thriller on obsession and existential crisis, with immersive visual and sound that made the harmonization felt perfect. And according to Cinema Maximal, it is still worth it to be the best Indonesian psychological thriller of all time. Next one is perhaps a hard watch. I actually watched this film, but honestly, it's not a film that I would revisit. It is so traumatic. It's just so terrifying how 27 steps of me 
depicts the impact of sexual abuse victim. But what stands out is how surreal as well as this film is through a simple execution that made it so easy to understand and process deeply into the soul. Lastly, Cinema Maxima recommends The Narrow Bridge, which focuses on religious issues. There's honestly a lot of film that use religion as a central theme, and I agree with what Cinema Maxima said that most of those films rarely make a good experience. But not this though, since the storytelling is so on point and even 40 years after being made, it is still horrifyingly relevant until today. And just right into it, Dick Bot movie first recommendation is Lady Terminator. If you've had followed Ascended Cinema for a while, you'll see there's a one whole video where it discusses this film. But nevertheless, it's perhaps one of the best classic action films that Indonesia ever had, and I totally agree actually. I love this film to death, you know, how they utilize film final and create something so impossible yet fantastical is a feast to rewatch after a while. And next, Jakarta Twilight is Dick Bot's movie's favorite Indonesia anthology film. Six different stories, yet it ties intricately about Jakarta citizen near Maghrib or Twilight time. And the ending, for the account owner, is one of the best endings that he ever watched. And to close the list, Dick Bot movie gave a quite out of the re box recommendation because he recommends a short film titled I'm Sorry, This Is The Only Thing I Could Do, an avant-garde experiment that tells a story about emptiness through Indonesian popular instant noodle Indomie. It's a very bizarre concept, yet as fresh as it sounds. Okay, as you can probably see, this video was added after the actual recording because one of the creators I contacted, Dafa Ahmad, gave the recommendation late, but fair enough, he gave a great recommendation and it's a plus value for your watch list, so I think I'm going to give it to you. First, like and share. It's a film that just won the Grand Prix at Osaka International Film Festival recently. And a realization to showcase how connection on the internet is just as real as connection in real life. Human connection, support system, and empathy plays a big role in this film to raise awareness about online sexual abuse. Maybe it's also just a reminder on how to avoid online sexual abuse and to be supportive and empathetic toward the victim. Speaking of the, about the digital world, two blue stripes announcement in social media received a negative criticism and boycott to ban the film from theaters due to its taboo content. Nevertheless, it's an important film to watch and discuss to raise awareness about sex education, which is weirdly still a taboo to discuss in Indonesian society, but in the end, the film got a large amount of attendees and acclaim from critics, which in my opinion is a badass in its own way. But if you're looking for literal badass, Praman Silent Fury is a great film that features and shows how minorities have their own story to tell, different but still cool enough to be accepted into majority. And lastly, the majority of people dream of going to Haji. But what happens when that dream becomes shattered after your own travel agent trick you? Mecca I'm Coming surprisingly brings a relevant story that happened a lot in Indonesia and as with a subtle criticism to the system that is involved in bringing Muslim to do haji. And that's what Dava Akman recommended for your Indonesian film watch list. And so we've reached to the end of recommendation. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Again, thank you so much for the film accounts that I've collaborated in this video. If you want to reach these accounts that I've collabed with, you can send a message from the link down below. And I'm so sorry if the film isn't available in your region at this point. I really do hope that one day you could watch these films when somebody bought the rights for it. For the films that are available, let me know in the comments what you thought about this film or maybe you can just DM me in Instagram because I really want to know what your thought about these films are. As usual, Cinema Life always releases the podcast on Thursday and Sunday so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything and thank you so much for listening until the end. Hope you have a great day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.